Hey YouTube, it's been a while since I wanted to do a quick review of my SW Modec tank bag. But first, intro! This is the Daypack model, and I specifically chose this one as I wanted to keep it as small and compact as possible, and still retain the quick clock, tank clock, however you call it, system for a quick release. Also, I had a valid concern that a too bulky tank bag would get in the way of my handlebar while steering, and even with this one, I can still get it to touch if I bring the handlebar to a full lock. I really like that it is expandable and when I don't need to carry everything, like when I'm traveling fully loaded, I can use it even in its smaller capacity. The overall product has a nice quality feeling and the bag looks quite well built, with nice materials and certainly capable to get some abuse on the road. It also comes with a rain cover, as pretty much everything with a zip cannot be guaranteed to be waterproof, but I have never used it so far, and even though I was under the rain several times in Ireland or during the long Norway round, I always found the content to stay dry. To stay on the safe side though, I would probably keep it on if I was looking forward to riding for hours under the pouring rain. Before opening it up and showing you what I keep inside, I just wanted to point out a couple of things I'm not really crazy about. As I said, this model is equipped with a tank lock system. This plastic part is fitted underneath the bag itself and it is supposed to couple with a matching component bolted on the tank cap. I find it quite easy to just drop the bag on the tank and in a GIF the bag is secured, no questions. Sadly, the release mechanism is not a story. The whole lock relies on this steel cable that drives the opening of these plastic jaws, and there are two issues here. The ergonomics are not great, and I find the location of this cable inconvenient. With or without gloves, I find myself losing a lot of time looking for it, when I just want to remove the bag quickly, but hey, maybe with other bikes and other handlebars it's better. I would like to have some feedback from other bikers about this, and maybe a comparison with the Jivis system. These jaws tend to get stuck in an open position. The first time I noticed it, I was traveling and all of a sudden I was unable to lock the bag onto the bike anymore, and I couldn't figure out why. Spraying a little chain lube on it seemed to mitigate this, but it has never really gone away for good. Moving on and taking a look of what's inside the bag. We've got a nice looking red lining all over the place, solid quality materials and a very convenient mesh in the upper part. A handy zip secures a few cables and my Bluetooth earbuds away from the rest of the gear. This is where I also store my satnav unit when not in use. It's not here at the moment because it is broken and it is back to the UK for repair. In the main compartment I wish there was a divider to arrange my gear a little bit better. I know there is another SW Motec bag that has it. My stuff got a bit messy and some smaller items have a tendency of moving around. I am now in the process of reorganizing everything anyway. Usually the left pocket is where I store my cameras. You can see my Sony FDR-X3000, which is the one I use for my helmet footage. The empty space beside is for my GoPro, which I can't show you now because I'm actually recording this clip with. The right pocket is where I keep some smaller stuff, like this plastic box where I stash my spare memory cards, adapters, those kind of things. The GoPro Smart Remote keychain is just useless to me, and I also never use the Sony remote, so there's no point in carrying it around anymore. The last things that I always carry in this side pocket are a couple of spare thumb screws, just in case I lose one while I'm on the go or I just want to get creative with my mounts and I'm not home. Moving on, here we have the GoPro Smart Remote as I mentioned before. I have found convenient to keep it strapped on my right forearm for quick operations when riding in full gear, without messing around too much with my gloves. Going further on, here I have two tripod mounts for the GoPro. The first has flexible legs that I can bend and adjust on uneven surfaces and keep the camera leveled against the ground. I can also wrap them around pipes, branches or other weird shapes. 
The second one I actually use most of the times is a glorified selfie stick, but it's all made of metal and features an extension I can screw on on the bottom to use it as a tripod when needed. The adjustable ball head makes all the difference in the world to me. I have a few other bits and bobs when it comes to mounts, adapters, connectors. Some of them I am still experimenting with to check if they are worthy to carry all the time, while with some others I don't really have a choice, like the GoPro remote proprietary charging cable. Finally, I wanted to talk about the system I chose to keep all my electronic devices charged. You might have noticed this USB cable popping out from the tank bag and going straight into the main compartment, connected to this huge plastic thing. This is actually a power bank that I specifically selected, featuring 15,000 mAh with one USB Type-C fast charging input, two separate USB outputs, one of which is a fast charge too. Super handy for a quick boost to both action cameras over a lunch break for instance. The idea is that I can keep charging it when I'm riding, when the bike is mostly in the high revs and the stress on the battery is minimal because the alternator is working most efficiently. This way, whenever I need it, on the side of the road or overnight in my tent, I always have more than enough juice to fully charge my cameras, my phone and everything else. The neat trick with this unit is that I can also jumpstart almost any vehicle battery, and I guess it's bulkiness, it's a price I'm glad to pay for this. It has a specific connector and a set of cables for the high current it draws when needed, but the first time I tried it out with Marco I wasn't let down. Okay, that's gonna be my next Christmas present. I have now come to an end of this review. I hope that you enjoyed it and got something useful out of it. I'm happy to have this bag, but for 120 euro I would have expected a little extra effort in the release mechanism that could have been done better. If you have any questions or any tips to give, feel free to give a shout in the comment section below. Don't forget to give a big like, push that subscribe button if you want to stay in the loop for future videos, and thanks for watching.